So by that point, we already had lawyers. And so we get there, 2 p.m. Uh, Kate Molina is the deputy district attorney who's doing the arraignments that day. She informs us she's now upping this to felony charges of unlawful use of a weapon. And we get in front of the judge and she pulls out this phony police report that I didn't even know existed, filed by a guy named John Slaughter. Now, it turns out he and I had actually been to several events uh, at the same time in the past, but my only real interaction that I could recall with him was at the vigil for the Orlando shooting victims, uh, which was about a month before this. I think it was June 12th. This all happened on July 7th, 2016. So June 12th, about three or four weeks before this, I was there filming the Orlando nightclub vigil. You know, again, I'm not there to cause trouble. I'm not there to mock anyone. You know, it's an absolute tragedy what happened down there in Orlando. Some of you guys might remember that's when, I, I guess, was a radical Islam guy had busted into the uh, gay nightclub in Orlando and started shooting people. Absolutely horrific. You know, I'm certainly not going to go to something like that and, and mock people, or make fun of people. You know, m my objective on that evening was to put together a package from the thing because it was a huge crowd at that Orlando vigil, and, and shop it to the news networks, see if anyone wanted to buy it. Um, so John Slaughter and a bunch of other people decided to get in my face, scream and yell at me at this thing. Um, I did not feel that my life was in danger at that point. It did not reach, it did not escalate to the level of what happened at this. Also, there's a row of police right there. So there were some people giving me guff, John Slaughter being one of them screaming into my camera, screaming his phone number into my camera, telling people to call him, screaming his phone number, saying that he's the basketball coach at uh, Portland Community College. So I did end up selling that video to uh, vidmax.com. Um, so, I, so I show up to the arraignment. This guy had filed, filed a police report, John Slaughter, claiming that I was sending him threatening race-based text messages, voicemails, and that I had driven by his house one night with my hand in the shape of a gun pointing towards him. I barely know who this guy is. I didn't care who this guy was at that point. I'm not going to go out of my way to do that. I don't do that sort of thing. I well, was a news videographer. You know? Um, so he's also claiming in this police report, com complete conjecture, that I have ties to all these white supremacist groups. He calls me a white nationalist anarchist in this police report. <laughs> so Kate Molina is reading this out loud in front of the judge. She's reading it as fact, with TV cameras rolling, capturing the audio. I'd never even heard of this police report. I was never asked about it. They, they never asked me anything about it. So I'm looking at my attorney going, what is she talking about? So the, the district attorney uses that as justification to up this to felonies, and put a $250,000 bail on me and throw me into jail. And then brought, news is broadcasting, oh, violent white supremacist guy who pulled a gun on protesters. Because my video angle is the only one that shows the initial attack. That was immediately seized by police. I couldn't get that out. So the only thing the news showed was the seven seconds I had the gun out. They didn't include, oh, the video news journalist who had a mob of people coming after him. No, they didn't include that just like with Billy Wilson up in Vancouver. They don't say that his truck was surrounded and people were throwing rocks at him. They just say the guy who drove through protesters in Vancouver. You wonder why I have to take to my own media? Stuff like that is why. I have never been sued for defamation in the media that I've done. I've never been given a cease and desist. I've never been forced to do any retractions because everything that I've ever posted has been true. I don't have to uh, flip things around like what mainstream does. So she brings up this John Slaughter report. They toss me into real jail at that point. But for Kate Molina to sit up there and call me a racist, how many black folks have I tossed into prison? The answer to that would be zero. How many black folks is Kate Molina? Prosecutor from Multnomah County. How many black folks has she tossed into prison? Hundreds? Thousands? It's her job to do that on a daily basis. And she has the gall to call me a racist? Where was she when members of the community, namely LGBT community, were out front of the Rose Garden in the convention center? 
fending off the Westboro Baptist Church. I was there. Where was Kate Molina? How can she claim that I'm racist and that I have some sort of hatred of LGBTQ people when I'm out there doing that sort of thing? Her mother should be disgusted with her for the act that she pulled on me. She's lying to the judge, pulling out this false police report, making all these accusations. Her father was actually a district attorney. I'm doing some investigating on him that I'm keeping in my dead man switch vault. So they tossed me into jail. There's national outrage uh, that I'm thankful for. Um, let's see if I can just turn this off here. Uh, Oregon Firearms Federation were raising funds for me. I'm very thankful for that. You know, I couldn't tell my own story. You know, there were there were bloggers getting the story out. You know, people donating to the defense fund. Uh, but media couldn't wait to hang me with with all this false stuff about me because I was out scooping media all through 2016. I was at some of the same events they were at. They decided to not run the story. I'd, I'd run the video. It'd get hundreds of thousands of views. I'm out scooping them on everything through 2016. So in jail, I was in a good behavior wing. Um, I met some folks who aren't necessarily bad people, but they just got caught up in things that you shouldn't get caught up in. I'm not making excuses, but at least it explains some things. And I did gain a, a, a whole new vision on you know, the justice system and, what, and things like that. Um, and, and I think I have a lot uh, in common with the Black Lives Matter movement based a lot on uh, things that I learned in jail, you know. Um, so thankfully, I was able to get bailed out thanks to Oregon Firearms Federation, Lars Larson, Victoria Chaff, countless other people. So I'm then on pretrial release after I get bailed out after 11 days in jail. I am ordered by pretrial release officer Chelsea Fanua. I am banned from blogging. I am banned from posting videos. This is my job, by the way. She's banned me from working. I'm banned from speaking to the media. I'm banned from going on Twitter. I'm banned from going to political events. I can't tell my own story. If I were to do any of those things, I'd be tossed into jail again and, and lose all the bail money. Has anyone ever heard of anything, anything like that? Someone being, having those kinds of restrictions on them? Yeah. So in the, in the indictment on me, it lists only vague descriptions of these people. Mm -hmm. On July 7th, 2016, Strickland intentionally menaced a man with a blue backpack and black pants. No names, just vague descriptions. Now, I've looked through 100 indictments since then at various different things. Mine is the only indictment that I've ever seen that does not list names. Just vague descriptions. Not even Karenz and Chaddock are named in this thing, who were later identified. So the judge ordered that the evidence be sealed. My video, my first person video, which is the only one that shows the attack, sealed evidence, public can't see it. The Hatfield surveillance videos that shows the mob gathering up, formulating their plan, sealed evidence, public can't see it. 